Hello, welcome to Dungeon Dwellers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing The Occultist, Volume 1. Uh, it's, it's our 13th uh, review for Halloween month. It's written by Team, uh, t- team <laughs> Tim Seeley, art by Victor Drujan New. How, how do you pronounce that? Uh, apparently, the, the occultist character was created by um, uh, Mike Richardson, who I have no idea who that is. This is published by, by Dark Horse Comics. It's a superhero adventure book. I'll just read the back for you. Rob Bailey must balance responsibilities as a boyfriend, as a college student, and as the new wielder of the sword, an ancient book of spells that has bound itself to him. Pursued by a team of hit mages hired by the powerful Aiden Beck, it's trial by fire for the new occultist. As he learns to handle his powerful magic tome of, or suffer at the hands of these deadly enemies, but as he fights for his life, our hero wonders whether he's wielding this enigmatic weapon or if it's the one in control. Um, yeah, so I have to bring up certain things about this comic before I get into the review. Um, obviously I'm a Christian and there's, I, sh- I guess I should have expected this when I first picked up the book, but there's lots of anti-Christian shit. A lot of Gen Xer like, oh, fuck you, mom and dad, like, rebellion for the, you know, I, God forbid, like, parents teach kids discipline, right? Um, there, there's even, like, some, like, barbs at the whole, like, Christians hating Dungeons Dragons, which stem from the Satanic Panic. Which, if you didn't fucking know that the satanic panic was real, it fucking was, okay? But these boomers, you you tell them that, and they and you give them receipts, and they're like, no, no, it's bullshit, fake news. Even though the receipts come exact from the FBI itself, I'll put a link in the description from a Mr. Medicare, uh stream where he watch where he talks about. Uh, the Satanic Panic and the uh, Finders, which was the ma- the main cult that was uh, abusing kids and then selling them uh, around the world for either to be slaves, and you know what kind of slaves I mean, or to be chopped up and use their parts. It's fucked. It's fucked up, dude. And that's what started the whole Satanic Panic, by the way. So I'll put a link in the description for that uh, live stream. There's also, uh, if you don't want to watch the Mr. Medica live stream, there's also a documentary called Finding the Finders, which is super dark. But people need to, I feel like people need to know about this shit. Especially when they keep bringing up the satanic panic to prove their fucking anti-Christian bullshit. When it turns out it was fucking real. Okay? So yeah, so it, obviously if you're an atheist and you don't mind anti-Christian shit in your in this book, I guess as an action adventure book, it's okay. Um, uh, some of the villains are look kind of cool. Some of the powers are cool. I don't kind. The thing is, like when they when the fights start. The, the the guy, the cultist, Rob Bailey, is so fucking powerful that he's, basi- he's basically one-shotting dudes. So it's like you're not even getting that much of a... F- the fight scenes to me aren't that great because it's like either he one-shots them or something happens where he's not allowed to one-shot them until he's... until a opportunity presents himself where he can just one-shot the enemy. And they do that thing where they have to have, you know, if there's this one b- kind of being, there's the opposite kind of being, which is called the Sword Breaker, which is just a snake, snake demon looking thing that doesn't look like, I don't even know, like, for something called the Sword Breaker, they couldn't come with, up with more original design. A lot of the dialogue to me was pretty bad. 
There's a lot of outdated pop rep, pop culture references, even for 2012, which is when I think this was really originally published. Uh, it's 18, it's like 19 bucks for five, I think it's like five issues, which is pretty weak. Uh, the art style looks completely different. What the fuck does this say? This book collects the one shot, the occultist, the series, the occultist, once for three, and the occultist from Dark Horse presents 11 through 13. So, so, what the fuck? Whatever. I would say the first half of the, um, the when, when the main, the one uh, arc is going on, it's okay, but then when it goes into like, you know the standalone kind of issues where where he's like fighting like these vampires and demons it, I thought it was a little shitty in my opinion I do I do think that the twists were like because he gets this um, teacher like to teach him uh, magic or whatever it turns out to be Aiden back in a new body and uh, Aiden Beck helped him fucking defeat the sword breaker. I don't know, dude. Like, to me, the art is like inconsistent. It, the art still changes from book to book, kinda. Like, from the first issue, it looks completely different. In the other issues, it's like it's like he's tr doing that tracing thing, where people like trace like photographs of people like doing poses and shit like that one guy did does in that brian k bond book uh what's it called uh ex machina and then like it kind of changes back again to the more traditional hand-drawn art stuff that he was doing before it's like i don't know dude i don't know i don't like it uh it, to me it's like if I can put away my personal biases to the side, I at best this is a five out of ten, and not worth, um, not worth the twenty bucks they're asking for. Though it does have a cool cover, but that's other than that, like it to me it sucks. If you're looking for like a good dark horse book, I would say. Honestly, their manga selection is a lot better, in my opinion. But, like, I would say the Goon is pretty good. You also have the Hellboy books, which uh, I personally don't have. I, I read them. They were all at the library, so I just... Well, I figured, why waste the money? I would just read it at the library. But, yeah, I've, I don't know. I could... I might pick up volume one of hellboy though like these comic re book reviews are getting no views so it's like do i really want to spend more money i already spent like 250 bucks on graphic novels this month and like it, no i'm getting no views besides from my manga reviews which i don't feel like doing because, because like the uh, because I don't know man like the an I've been arguing with anime fans manga fans all morning and it's like dude like they're either like they're either like so like I like it's hard to tell if they're like trolling or if they're serious but like I point out I say like hey that clover is an obvious ripoff of Naruto which everything about black clover is pretty much a ripoff of Naruto. The reason these people don't get sued for ripping off each other is because they have really weak copyright laws. So when like a dude from America ripped off Bleach, which was Gene Simmons' son, he got sued the fuck out out of by Ty Kubo because the copyright laws in America is a lot stricter. And that's that his that comic book, from what I've heard about it, was less way less of a ripoff of Bleach than like fucking Black Clover is of Naruto. It's like, dude, 
Uh, sorry for the random rant, but yeah, so yeah, this was a 5 out of 10 at best. Um, hopefully when I read Hack Slash, I, uh, it won't be, like, super dated, and, like, I'll actually enjoy it, but, like, you know, shit, ha when you get older, your, when you get older, your tastes change, right? Especially when, like, you know, like, cause, like, when I read, like, Hack Slash, I was, like, 19, 20, I'm almost 30 now, <laughs> I actually have a fully developed brain. Because your brain doesn't, for people who don't know, your brain doesn't get uh, de fully developed until you're 25. So I, my tastes have now settled. And I've actually had experiences where I've actually, like, I keep, have a good idea of what's good or what's not good. I'm not somebody who just started reading comics and now thinks he can review it and make... <laughs> And make a living off it. Like a lot of these fucking kids are. Like this, there was this one kid. I'm not going to say his name. But he has this highly edited video. Where he's like oh man this is. He reviews like this new manga. He's like oh man this is the new best thing. Blah blah blah. It's so great. Blah blah blah. And he admits in this video. That he he only started collecting manga. When he first heard of the series. And the series is a new series. <laughs> like the series came out. What, let me check. Because I have it. Came out 2019, so last year. So he's been only in the hobby for a year, but he feels like he knows enough to like read it and be like, "This is the best new series ever." It's like, get the fuck out of here, retard! <laughs> oh my god! All right, yeah, I'm gonna go. Um, what am I gonna review next? So I, mm, I don't know. Well, cause like I already reviewed an image book, right? Well, okay, I'll review uh, Garth Ennis' Shadow next. Alright, peace.